But that's the lavishing that I think that if, and I'm a, and I'm a, I'm a dad in the flesh with best intentions, how much more is God the Father who's not limited in resources, doesn't hold our stuff against us, that all we do is look up at him with our big brown eyes and go, I need more of you, God. I need your touch. And he's just like, just loving to lavish. That. That's God's heart. The Bible says, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers and is in health. Number one, God's heart is that we prosper in our souls. Number two, he cares that we prosper in our health. So number one, man needs, man's got a need. Number two, God is willing. Number three, what's your response to that? So the last thing in that last verse that Jesus said to him was, see to it that you tell no one, which I think is really curious. But show yourself to the priest, who's the guy who had to send you out, and offer the gift, watch this, that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. In the Old Testament, they would sacrifice bulls, goats, lambs, maybe even other things. They would take them to the priest as their offering, as their sacrifice. And when somebody needed to repent of their sins, needed to confess their sins, they brought a sacrifice. They gave it to the priest. The priest would offer it up to God. And that action was man bringing something to pay for his sin, in essence, in, 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 um, in metaphor, in, in symbol, and to put it before God. And then in his heart, he got right with God, and the offering went up, and it was an action corresponding with a heart condition. <gasps> And that's what the priests did. Priests would hear from man and offer to God. And that mattered, and that was important. And hang with me for just a second, and then we're going to jump into uh, pulling the band up here. So wait just a second, guys, if you would. So watch this. See to it that you tell no one. Can you really imagine that? Can you imagine being in such a deteriorated, dilapidated state, the physical body, that you're, that you, you're constantly in pain, that you might, you might have a very um, hideous look to you, that you might not smell right because of the conditions you're in. You really were the scourge of society. Can you imagine being at that place? For the purpose of what we're talking about metaphorically, can you imagine sin being so far rampant in somebody's life that everybody knows the kind of person you are? And you come to Jesus, and he goes, now here's the deal, bro. I want you to go tell the priest, but I don't want you to tell anybody else about that. And I'm thinking, yeah, right, that this guy would be jumping down those dusty roads, clicking his heels in the air, yippee, and taking off any kind of indicator that might have been gross that he's seen where, where sores were, and taking off those nasty bandages, and it looks like baby skin again, and, 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 he's, just, and he's shedding everything that was, and just telling every friend, every person he knew. I, I, I just, I'm going to have to ask Jesus in heaven, did you really think he wasn't going to tell everybody? I mean, I know that you know everything, but did you honestly for a second believe that a leper who was healed with one touch from your hand wasn't going to absolutely explode? What if the leper didn't do that? What if he goes, okay, Jesus, you and me, that's it. We're just, I'm just going to act like nothing ever happened. It's ludicrous. But how much the more is the soul that is saved for all of eternity from their life of death and sin a greater example of God's love for us than even the healing of the physical body? At best, the physical body gets 80, maybe 90 years. It's already temporary. But what isn't temporary is eternity. And when someone comes to him and says, if you're willing, cleanse me. And he goes, I, I'm, I'm regarding their sin. And he says, I'm willing. And if you look to the cross and you look to the word of Christ and you, and you see that he's your savior and that, change, that life change happens, then for all of eternity, you're cleansed. How come there aren't more people skipping around because they've been saved? Their life has been made clean. How come that Christians oftentimes are some of the most sour push, baptized in pickle juice kinds of people? <laughs> well, 
Bless God. Hallelujah, brother. I don't want anything to do with that. I just don't want to be that kind of place that we become so religious and so right and so everything that people, you know, the world is saying, man, if that's what it is, I'm having more fun out here. And it's a turning of the ship. Slowly, but it's a turning of the ship. That there's joy. That there's sometimes uncontained excitement. I'm going to tell you this right now. Most band leaders, and, and I'm not saying our team has said this, but most band leaders look out on a church that is standing there doing this. Blase. Blase about the whole thing. Well, you know, it's just, bless God and thank Instead, to have a dance in your step, instead to have an excitement in your voice, instead that when a waitress walks up on your table and you and your wife are there, that they, she doesn't see you going, Rah! but that to see some love, that when somebody interacts with your kids, they say, I wonder what's going on or not going on at the household there. Instead, they see godly kids. When they see us acting at the office, that it's consistent with the way that we act at church. Do I need to go on? That we're real the way that God's created us. And that we're actually living this way. And he says, go show yourself to the priest. Now watch this. Look, I can bet you that this leper had a renewed sense of being around the other healthy people. And he didn't just get back to the house one day and celebrate one time and say, you know what? I'm going to go hang back out at the leper colony for a few weeks. And I wonder why people are once a month churchers. It's because other stuff's more important. Between the leper colony and the priest. And they don't have that excitement. And I don't know why Jesus said don't say anything about it. I don't know. I don't know. You're looking at me dumbfounded without an answer for you right now. Sorry. But if you figure it out, call me. That's cool. And, and I know somebody probably could. Jeez Louise, let's keep going. Here we go. All right. Let, let, let. Um, five minutes? Five minutes. Five minutes. Oh, yeah. Five minutes. Absolutely. Here we go. Here we go. And the band, you can go ahead and come on up real quick. Go real quickly to an amazing verse of Scripture that's going to help tie all this together in Hebrews chapter 9. Can you do that real fast? Hebrews chapter 9. Is this making sense so far? Yes. Okay. Hebrews chapter 9. Five minutes, here we go. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12. Now remember, I told you about the sacrifices that were necessary. I told you about the symbolic action that went with the heart change. Now watch this. When Jesus said those things, was that before or after the work of the cross? Somebody yell that out. Okay, say it with a little confidence. Before or after? You're right. Before the work of the cross. So had... Jesus died by that time. Yeah. The cross hadn't happened. But in Hebrews, we see a different perspective. This perspective is from after the work of the cross. And look what it says about Jesus as it relates to his willingness. Now watch, watch, watch. God's heart, his willingness... Watch what happens. Jesus was so willing that he became the ultimate sacrifice in our place. Look at verse 12 in chapter 9. Um, sorry, verse 11. When Christ came as high priest of the good things that are already here, he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, which basically means a building, church building made for worship, not part of this creation.